we can be sure that Obama's trip to Cuba was much more than what it appeared to be. If we dig a little deeper, this becomes obvious. Obama's trip to Cuba on March 20th, 2016 is a historic trip because it marks the first time in 90 years that a United States president has visited the small country situated just 90 miles away from the southernmost tip of the Florida Keys. The occult significance of these numbers are evident as 90 plus 90 equals 180. It should be noted that the idiom to do a 180 means for someone to reverse their course or to go back on their word. Remember this important fact because we will come back to it later in regards to the parabolic and spiritual symbolism behind this event. Continuing, we can clearly see a reference to the number 666 in the number 180 since 60 plus 60 plus 60 equals 180. Simply remove the zeros and we are left with 666. However, a connection to Satan and the beast or Antichrist is not only found in the simple elementary addition of numbers surrounding this event. If we observe this happening with spiritual discernment, it becomes evident that this event is part of the war being constantly waged in both the spiritual and physical realms between the forces of evil and the children of the Most High for the souls of men. Allow me to show you the spiritual significance of this event. Obama's historic trip to Cuba was carefully planned so that it would occur on March 20th 2016, which is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is adjusted each year so that it falls on the Sunday before the pagan holiday Easter, which is celebrated for the goddess Astarte or Ashtoreth. Disregarding the connection to the pagan holiday of Easter, which was set up by the Roman Catholic Church, Palm Sunday in its original form commemorates the arrival of the Messiah and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. On Palm Sunday, Messiah rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey with a procession of the faithful carrying palms. This can be found in John chapter 12, verse 12 through 14, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 through 13, Matthew 21, verse 1 through 11, Mark 11, verse 1 through 11, and Luke 19, verse 28 through 40. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foil of a donkey. This suggests that Yehoshua was declaring that he was the king of Israel. Previously, I showed you how Obama made another historic visit on this exact same day, March 20th, 2013, where he imitated Christ's triumphal entrance into Jerusalem, riding a donkey, in his first visit to Israel as president. This connects both Obama's historic trip to Israel and Cuba on the same day. We can say that Obama is riding a donkey because he is the head of the Democratic Party which has a donkey as its mascot. Now let us go back for a moment. Remember earlier when we connected Obama's historic trip to Cuba with the number 180 which means for someone to reverse their course or to go back on their word. Now that we have connected Obama's historic visit to Cuba to his historic visit to Israel, which occurred on the same day, March 20th, it should also be noted then that his visit to Israel was called a covenant of peoples, which is a reference to Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 and the covenant 
that is confirmed by the Antichrist and then subsequently broken when he reneges or does a 180 by going back on his word. The word renege comes from the Latin renegare, which means to deny, and it is also connected to renegade. A renegade is a traitor, a rebellious apostate, and turncoat, someone who rejects a religion, cause, allegiance, or group for another, a deserter. Ironically, Obama's Secret Service code name is the renegade. Therefore, we can clearly see that spiritually, this trip to Cuba is pointing us to the Antichrist and his promotion of a world revolution against God through his formation of a one world government under his rule as the false messiah, the confirmation of a covenant and the eventual 180 or breaking of the covenant and the abomination of desolation. The children of God are against all antichrist propaganda and we cry muerta a la revolucion, death to the revolution. The time is now. Amen. Shalom.